This is our winning momentum strategy. It's something we've been training with for many, many years, and I'm glad to be sharing it with you today. A bit about us here at Training Wins before I get into it. We are a group of pro traders, well over 30 years of experience. We're real traders and real teachers, and we've been developing our own strategies and training systems and teaching people from complete beginners to experts uh, around the globe. <clears throat> now, in today's presentation, I'm going to share with you the exact same money management rules that myself and the other traders here use on a daily basis. <clears throat> um, I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to need to trade this system. Then I'm going to give you the setup, step by step. And then when we get to this part of the presentation, I'm going to bring up my life charts and ask you to throw out a few symbols. Could be anything you're trading right now or something you like to trade. We'll pull up a chart together and we'll analyze how this system would have performed on that market, okay? And then hopefully we'll have time to answer as many of your questions as possible. <clears throat> a couple of poll questions first before I get started. Out of curiosity, how many of you have seen me present at an event or webinar like this before? <clears throat> Please let me know, yes or no. Please uh, type that into your chat. Just gonna grab a quick drink of my water here. Great, thank you so much. A couple other quick questions here. Which market do you trade most? Is it stocks, options, futures, or forex? Again, please take a moment and type that in. Wow, good mix right off the bat. Excellent. Okay, I promise I'll share as many examples with you as I can. And lastly, on average, how many trades do you place per month? Is it 1 to 10, 11 to 20, or are you very active? Please let me know. Excellent. <coughs> wow, okay, great group. Thank you so much for your responses. <clears throat> please remember, trading can be extremely risky if you don't know what you're doing, so please don't trade with real money until you are completely comfortable with the system you're using. And now, on that note, let me share with you our money management rules. This is how we try to reduce <clears throat> risk as much as possible when trading. First of all, I'm sure you've heard this many times, do not trade with money you can't afford to lose, but more importantly, what it's really all about is trading with an amount that is small enough and it feels completely insignificant to you. <clears throat> trading is so much more about how you manage a trade once you're in it than it is selecting an entry. When you're in a trade, you need to be able to remain calm, think clearly, <coughs> excuse me, and manage that trade appropriately. If you're worried about the amount of money you have in that trade, you simply won't be able to do that, okay? So there's a very important rule. Also, never risk more than 5% of your account balance in any one trade. And if <coughs> you have a larger account, consider reducing this to 25 or even 2%. That way you'll still have a sizable trade on but you'll reduce your risk considerably. <clears throat> we also never have more than 50% of our account balance active in the market at any one time. The <clears throat> reason being, number one, there's so many factors uh, when it comes to the markets that are completely out of our control. <clears throat> and any major news announcement can really drive the markets against you. So uh, this is meant to, number one, reduce the amount of loss you would take in such a situation, but more importantly, this allows you to have money in your account to put back into the markets and make back those losses. <clears throat> and with what I'm gonna show you today, it really wouldn't take you very long. Lastly, you should spread out your trades. You should always take just one or two trades per time frame, and you want those to be the highest probability setups. I'll show you exactly how you can <clears throat> select those today, but remember, spread out your trades and uh, don't, don't stack them on. You, you've seen recently in the markets, we have actually, it's, it's continued on for about three months now, this volatility, all this back and forth in the markets. And we've seen many days like today where the Dow, for example, is up over 200 points, but the next day it retraces completely. So if we jump in and we pit, put in five or six trades today and tomorrow it completely reverses on us, we're gonna be in a big hole right off the bat. So that's what this is meant to avoid. 
couple of other sayings we live by here. Number one, you will never go broke taking profits. <clears throat> Excuse me, you'll see just how we limit our risk with this system. So when we do have those profits, we want to bank them. And please remember that trading is never about whether you're right or wrong. And that's important. But it is all about how much make money you make when you're right versus how much money you lose when you're wrong. <clears throat> so what will you need to trade this system? Well, just about any charting platform will do. You will be plotting three indicators on your chart. The 20 period simple moving average, along with a very stripped down version of the Ichimoku Kinkanoi indicator. <clears throat> and then the relative strength index, or the RSI. Okay, <laughs> we have a special setting, but I'm gonna share that with you today. So there is no need for you to go out and spend money on new hardware or complicated software. If you're watching this webinar, you already have everything you need. A few of the benefits of this system before I show it to you. <clears throat> Number one, it will work on any market. Stock options, futures, forex, globally, any time frame, any price level. I'm gonna show you several examples of each. Also, you don't need a lot of experience to trade this. You're gonna see just how quickly you can pick this up today. It has very clear entry and exit points has very, very low risk, <clears throat> but more importantly, it is cons consistently profitable. We have been trading this again over many years and through all different types of market environments, and it has been very, very consistent for us. So the strategy, <clears throat> again, has three components. First one, 20 period simple moving average. We have tested this with weighted exponential different time periods, 20 period simple moving average works best. <clears throat> then the Ichimoku Kinkin Hoi indicator. Now this is an indicator that has been extremely uh, popular over in Asia for many, many years and more recently here in North America. But <clears throat> I'm not going to be trading with the full Ichimoku uh, cloud indicator. You can use that as a strategy in itself, but I'm going to be show, uh, or using excuse me, a very stripped down version just for trend and I'll show you how. And then, of course, our RSI with our unique setting. Let me bring up my chart and start walking you through this setup. Okay. So <clears throat> what I like to do before I start looking for any trade is run through some charts and select charts that look like this. Okay, I remove all my indicators, and I'm looking for nicely trending stocks. Whether it's up or down, I really don't <clears throat> um, care either way. What I do care about is trend. When you're trading with trend and momentum, half the battle's already won. So <clears throat> this is the kind of chart we're looking for. Now, that's how you can spot trend. How you spot momentum? Well, we spot momentum based on the slope of the candles or, and this is where the 20 period moving average comes in, the slope of the 20 period moving average, okay? So, <clears throat> Let me go through this. This is what our chart looks like. And these are our three indicators. In light blue here is the 20 period simple moving average. Here in yellow and pink is the Ichimoku cloud indicator. Now, if I were to go into the settings here and show you what the cloud would look like in its normal state or with, with all the lines here, I'm going to move them back in. As I remove those, this is what it would look like, okay? There's a lot more lines on there. It's made up of moving averages, but with a special formula behind it. <clears throat> but all I'm using the cloud for is trend. And so we remove those lines, and what we're looking for to, uh, to quickly spot the trend here is whether or not the candles and the moving average are either above the cloud, which means it's in an uptrend, or if they're below the cloud, it would be a downtrend. <clears throat> or if either one of those is overlapping the cloud, then we're in a sideways consolidating market that we do not want to trade, okay? And <clears throat> one thing I don't believe I said was for the Ichimoku cloud, we do use the default settings. We do not change that. All we're doing is removing the Tenkin, the Kijin, and the Chico line, okay? Lastly, down below, 
is our relative strength index, or the RSI. And for the RSI, you know, it's typically used to identify extreme areas of overbought and oversold conditions. So it'll normally have uh, a line at either the 70 or the 80 level, and one at either the 20 <clears throat> or the 30 level. Well, we use it slightly differently. And the default on most charting platforms is a, a length of 14. We want a much more responsive RSI, so we cut that in half. We're going to change the length from 14 to 7, right? and then we are simply going to remove those overbought and oversold lines and plot one right down the middle at the 50 level. So it's an RSI 7 with a line down the 50 level. Okay. So how do we identify entries? So for a long trend or a long trade, okay, trade to the upside, we are first and foremost looking for trend and momentum. Trend we can spot by quickly looking to see if the candles and the moving average are above the cloud. In this case, they are. So we have trend. Momentum we spot by the slope in either the candles okay, or the moving average. And we like to use the moving average because during times of a pullback, such as this, you could easily mistake in that for downward momentum. But right? you'll see that when the 20 period moving average maintains its slope, that tells you that this is nothing more than just a temporary pullback before the continuation of that trend. Okay, So once we have those two items, we have trend and momentum, we then turn our attention to the RSI. And for a long trade, what we're looking for is for the RSI to either come back and touch that 50 level or go just below it and then turn around. And when it crosses back above that 50, that would be our setup bar. Okay? So the day crosses above 50, that would be our setup bar. In this case, <clears throat> it would be this bar. Now, there's a difference between the setup and the trigger. That's a valid setup. The trigger to get you in the trade is a trade just above the absolute high of that setup bar. So one tick above that high and you're long. Your stop goes just below the most recent low, okay, in this case down here. Now one very important rule here is <clears throat> if, if this trades below the low of that bar first, the trade would be disqualified or negated. Okay? That alone will save you from most the losses that would otherwise happen with the system. So in other words, <clears throat> most of the trades that wouldn't work out in your favor are not even losers. They're just negated trades or disqualified trades. Okay. The other thing you're going to notice is that the majority of trades that do trigger long tend to move in your favor immediately, which is huge from an emotional standpoint. Remember, it's very important how you manage that trade once you're in it. If it moves in your favor immediately, it's going to allow you to remain calm right from the, the, the beginning. And also, if you're an options trader, it's huge because if you get into a, an options trade and it pulls against you, then trying to make back that loss in premium is going to require a much greater move in your favor. But if it moves in your favor immediately, it's a real bonus. Okay? So that's the criteria for a long trade. Let's look at the criteria for a short trade. <clears throat> Here we have a chart of FCX. Again, quickly, what we want to do is look at the far right of our chart and spot. Do we have trend? Okay, do we have trend and do we have momentum? So how do we spot trend? Well, in this case, the candles and the moving average are below the cloud. That's a downtrend. Okay? Do we have momentum, judging by the slope of that 20? Yes, we do. So if we have that, we then turn our attention to the RSI and wait for a move from below to above and then back below. Once it crosses back below, which in this case looks like it may happen in the next day or two, so this might be one you want to put on your watch list. <clears throat> Once it crosses below, that's the setup bar. Once you have the setup bar, 
you wait for a trade below the low of that setup bar to go short and your stop goes just above the most recent high. So back here is a great example right over here. Okay, so it crosses below. This is your setup bar. Let me just <coughs> highlight that for you. Right in here. Okay, trades below the low. Go short, put the stop just above the most recent high, and off it goes. Okay. Now what you're going to find are two things. That are, there's actually two things I want you to keep a very close eye out for. Number one is the slope of the 20 whenever the stock goes from above the cloud to below or vice versa. Whenever it goes through the cloud, typically if it goes through with momentum, in other words with that slope, it tends to lead to an exaggerated move. Okay? In other words, this trend lasts for quite some time. And what you're going to find is that throughout that trend, you're going to have multiple opportunities to enter. Okay? Now, remember that when you do <coughs> get that cross of the RSI and back, the one criteria that you're looking for, that you've got to make sure of, is that the slope of that 20 is maintained. If it goes flat like it did here, you no longer want to take that trade. Okay, and that other rule is once you have the setup bar, you're waiting for that trade below the low. If it were to trade above the high first, then you disqualify the trade. Okay, now if you're an aggressive trader and you get into a position <clears throat> and then you see another setup right after it and then another, etc., well, you can add to your position along the way. If you're more conservative like me, you can just maintain your original position and use the other setups as further confirmation that you're in the right trade and you should stick with it. Okay? Here's a chart of the 20-year uh, Treasury <coughs> ETF, TLT. Again, you're looking for those periods of trend and momentum. Bars and moving average are above the cloud. That's clearly an uptrend. Do we have slope? Yes, we do. In fact, we have a nice slope going from one side of the cloud to the other. We get a pullback. Here's the dip below and back above. We go long and off it goes. Okay? Now, I also want to make you aware of this. Whenever you see a double dip or a W type of pattern for a long trade, it's very, very powerful. That tends to lead to some of the most explosive moves. Same to the downside, except on the reverse you're looking for uh, a pattern that looks like the letter M. In other words, you're looking for a double dip. You move above, below, back above, back below. <clears throat> okay. Here recently was an entry, just a day ago, on, uh, on TLT, short. Okay. A few more examples for you. Here's GMCR. <clears throat> Again, you can quickly spot, as soon as you pull up the chart, you can tell whether you're in a downtrend, an uptrend, or a consolidating market, and judging by the slope of that 20, whether you have momentum in your favor or not. You can see here again, this is the most important part of this chart. Look at that slope from one side of the cloud to the other. That told you at this point that we were, gonna, we were in for a sustained move lower. Okay? At that point, all you're doing is turning your attention to the RSI and waiting for those moves from below to above and back below. There were several, <coughs> several entries here, all of which would have been profitable. Okay? Now, no one's saying that this is 100%, uh, you know, you're going to have 100% winning trades. No, you are going to have the trades that get stopped out for sure, but you're, what you will find is you're going to have a lot more winners and losers, and if you follow the rules, your losers will be much smaller than your winners. Okay? Here's a chart of UNH, and that's why this is another perfect example why we look for those charts that are trending nicely. Just a nice slow grind, either higher or lower, and then it's just a matter of picking off those retracements and identifying those perfect <coughs> entry points. And you can see here, there were several. There was one here, one in here. Here's a double dip, which kicked off this beautiful move higher. Okay. 
this will make trading much, much easier for you. Okay? And this, this move from one side of the cloud to the other with momentum gives you advance notice of what's about to happen with the stock. Not just what's about to happen, what, what will most likely last for a while. So identifying these moves from one side to the other, you can quickly build a watch list of short candidates and a watch list of long candidates. And then you just sit back, wait, and pick off those triggers off the RSI. Now once you're in a trade, <clears throat> you don't have to continue looking at the RSI. You can ignore the RSI completely once you're in that trade, unless you're more aggressive and you're looking for, um, you know, to add to your position at every new uh, setup, okay? Now, I noticed many of you also trade futures. Here's a chart of crude oil futures. It really doesn't matter what the market is that you're trading. What matters is that you have trend and momentum. Here's another chart that, you know, we had a move from above to below with momentum. And that lasted for quite a while. It was in just a nice slow grind lower. Once we had trend, you know, how do we identify trend? Candles, moving average, below the cloud. That's downtrend. Do we have a slope in our favor? Yes, we do. That's momentum. Turn our attention to the RSI, wait for a move above and back below. That's the setup bar. Wait for a trade just below, enter short, stop goes just above the most recent high, and off it goes. Okay? And there's, again, multiple entries along the way here. Every single one would have been profitable. Here's a chart of the Euro futures. Same thing. Nothing changes. Settings are the same. Rules are the same. <clears throat> and again, several crosses on that RSI, each one, each one, <clears throat> resulting in a nice entry and a, a really nice move to the downside. All right? Now, recently here on the Euro, we moved from above, or sorry, from below to above the cloud with momentum. So this should lead to a sustained move higher. So what do we do here? We're just waiting for the moving average to regain momentum to the upside here, regain that slope. And then we're waiting for those pullbacks where the RSI goes from above to below and back above. And those will be our setups. And we will be taking them for quite some time. That's all we're doing. <clears throat> those of you that trade Forex, here's a chart of the Euro Canadian dollar. Again, nothing else changes. What, what are you quickly looking for? Trend and momentum. When you have that slope in your favor, you're looking for that move from one side of the 50 line to the other. There's your entry. There's your move. <clears throat> now, when you get in a situation like this, these first couple of crosses here, if you had gotten in, that would have been fine <clears throat> because you still had momentum here and the trade worked out very nicely. If you had missed those and you only saw this last one at the cross here, you can see the moving average was flat. You would not want to take that trade, okay? Even though it did work out, <clears throat> you don't want to take that trade. Now, with this pair, again, we've seen a nice move from one side of the cloud to the other. All we're doing is waiting for a pullback and across the bottom. And look what we have right now, okay? Right now, it just happened. <clears throat> Okay. There was the, uh, the setup bar, trade above the high, which happened today. <clears throat> they should be continuing to move higher, right? British pound, US dollar, exact same thing. A very nice trending chart. Again, look at that move. Look at that heads up. It gave you from one side of the cloud to the other, okay? And you pick off those retracements with the RSI, every single one of those entries, would have been a winning trade, okay? <clears throat> now, I'm sure we have a lot of questions. I'm actually gonna bring in our coaching coordinator, Raul. He's gonna help me read off some questions and some symbols. This is, <laughs> would be a great time for you to type in a symbol you want me to look at. I'll bring up a chart. We'll see how this would have worked on that uh, stock or market, and we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. Raul? Vince, always a pleasure to join you. These are always amazing, amazing. events, lots of activity. I love this. This is great. Yeah. 
Uh, Roberta had a question earlier. She was asking if the charts that you were showing your strategy on were all daily charts. Oh, yes, these are. Um, but again, we can look at uh, different time frames. It works on all time frames. I'm going to ask you to do all those chart gymnastics in just a little bit. <laughs> sure. So the first symbol we're going to look at is G CMG, and that's for Paul. CMG, yeah, sure. Thanks, Paul. Totally. <clears throat> okay, so again, quickly, what you want to first do when you bring up a chart is quickly have a look at the far right, see if you are either above the cloud, below the cloud, or overlapping the cloud. Here we're clearly below with both the moving average and the candle, so we're in a downtrend. Do we have a slope? Uh, is the 20 period moving average sloping lower? Yes, it is. So we have momentum in our favor. Now we're waiting for those uh, moves from below to above the 50 and back below. Now you can see there were a couple here. I'll mark them for you recently one here and one here okay <clears throat> stock trigger and off it went and right now it's pulling back again so we may have another entry very soon in this area here because okay, so you can put that on your watch list here was another one recently you can see here we went from one side of the cloud to the other with momentum it then pulled back a little retested and bounced and again when it when it regained momentum is when it's flat, we don't want to look at it. When the 20 period simple moving average is sloping in our direction and we get a pullback like that, there's the cross on the RSI, okay? And there's the move, boom. Okay? That's exactly what you want to see. So it works very, very well. I can switch time frames. Let's go to an hour chart. Nothing changes. If you have that slope, Okay, and that, that trend in your favor, all right? And then you're just waiting for those crosses on the RSI. And that's all you're doing, all right? So it doesn't really matter if, and I'm going to switch to a, another time frame here. Okay, here's a 15 minute. Now, let me put some more data on here. Let's see if we can, <clears throat> if we can, uh, oh, it's only giving me an hour. Let's see. Let's go to 10 days. There we go. Um, it doesn't matter how far the pullback goes, okay? In other words, does it pull back in, and turn in front of the moving average? Does it do it when it's overlapping or beyond it? It really doesn't matter. What matters is that at the time that you get the RSI crossing back in your direction over that 50 line, what matters is that you still have the slope in the 20 period simple moving average, okay? that it has not flattened out yet. Most recently, on the 15 minute chart, we just got uh, a, a signal earlier today okay, to go along. So this one should continue moving higher the rest of this afternoon. Looks really good. So it works on all time frames. Uh, next one up is RJ. He's asking about a place that you'll likely be this Sunday with uh, your kids, Costco. <laughs> oh, Costco, yes. You can They're buy your six-gallon uh, <laughs> container of pickles, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. Uh, any particular time frame? Uh, he didn't mention, so I'm assuming it's on a daily. Okay. Well, I already had it on 15 minute, and you can see there was one set up right here. Again, all the criteria, all the rules remain the same. It's below the cloud. There's momentum in our favor. Our side moves from below to above and back below. There's our entry. There's the move. Let's go to daily. And here right now, we're in the midst of that pullback. You can see all we're waiting for now, all we're waiting for is a cross back below that 50. And when it does, that would be the setup bar. And then a trade below the low of that bar gets a short, and our stop goes just above the most recent high, and off we go. But this is what you want to see, a trend and momentum in your favor. And the fact that we've moved from one side of the cloud to the other with momentum means this should last a while. You see, there was an entry over here to begin with, and you see how well it did. Now it's pulling back, will most likely give us another entry. A little earlier in the year, there were several areas to get in here, all of which would have been profitable, okay? These ones here, where it went flat, you don't want to take those. Don't worry about these ones. Don't, don't, don't get excited about this, okay? Take the high percentage plays which are the ones that happen with that slope in your favor. 
Uh, Harry's asking about uh, USD CAD. Hmm. Now he's asking on a 15 minute time frame. Uh, let's see if there's anything on a 15 minute. Let me switch. First of all, USD CAD, <clears throat> you can see here on the daily there were several setups. But let's go to 15 minute and see. Let's zoom in a little. There's a lot of da data here. <clears throat> These there were, there were several setups here, but unfortunately it was flat here. So you wouldn't have wanted to take that setup. Um, let me see. Let me go further back <clears throat> and see what there was here. Uh, maybe in this area. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, it happens where, uh, well, right here, and this is a perfect example. Remember what I said about it doesn't matter how far the pullback is or how long it lasts. What matters is that when it finally crosses that 50 line here and gives you that setup bar, what matters is that you still have a slope higher on the moving average. Okay? That's what matters. <clears throat> uh, William Bradford, Mark, Robert, Henry, uh, Harry, I promise to get to your questions and uh, symbols as quickly as I can. Um, I'm going to let Vince get back to his presentation, then we'll return to do more questions and symbols. Okay, sure. Let, let's do that. <clears throat> let me just bring up my, my presentation again. Okay, so what I've shown you so far is a system that, as you've seen, will work on any market, any time frame, um, and, and any price level. We've traded this with $2 stocks. We've traded it with the Googles and the Amazons of the world. Um, it's very simple and easy to spot on a chart. Uh, it tends to move in your favor immediately as soon as it triggers. And one of the nicest parts of this is if you follow the rules, the majority of the trades that don't work out are not even losers. They're just negated trades, okay, or disqualified trades. So there's a ton of questions, and we, if we have time, we can even look at more charts. But before that, let me tell you about a, a pro class we have coming up on this strategy. Coming up Saturday, July 11th, 1 p.m. Eastern, slated for two hours. I'll be teaching this class. It will be recorded if you can't make that date. And what I'm going to teach you during that class, again, is the full system from entry to exit, including five different exit strategies. But we'll focus on the one that myself and the other traders here use on a regular basis. I'm also going to teach you a very unique way of adding support and resistance that will really increase the accuracy of this. Now, you've seen already how accurate it is, but this is meant more for those times where you have multiple trade setups at the same time and you want to select those one or two with the highest probability of success. This will help you do exactly that. And also, Fibonacci tools. I'm going to teach you two tools, one that will help you pinpoint that entry and uh, the second one that will help you identify a target of where you're going to be exiting. I'm also going to show you how I trade this with options. Okay, we're going to cover exactly what kind of delta you should look for, what kind of expiration you should look for, when you should be buying a call or put versus selling a credit spread. We'll cover all of that in the class. <clears throat> and one of my favorite parts is looking for trades together. We're going to be going through dozens of charts, picking out some very nice trades for the following week. And as a bonus, uh, I'm going to show you how to trade the Ichimoku Cloud Indicator, the whole indicator, as a strategy itself. We normally sell this as a whole separate class. I'm going to teach you uh, on the 11th <clears throat> exactly how to do that. So the link for this class is tradingwinds.com forward slash move, M-O-V-E. But before I do that, <clears throat> let me tell you exactly what you're going to get uh, before you order uh, so you know that it's right for you. As soon as your order is processed, which takes about half hour or so, you will receive an email with a link to a previous recording of, of the last pro class we did. That way you don't have to even wait until July 11th. You can watch it and start trading with this right away. And it's an on-demand recording. You can access it from wherever you have an internet connection and it's yours for life. But regardless, we are going to uh, give you an invite to the live class on July 11th. <clears throat> and in addition to that, we're going to give you a 30-day membership to our pro service. And let me tell you a bit about that. It's, it's really the most powerful way to get access to all our systems. What I've shown you today is just one of our systems. <clears throat> we have several. Some we haven't even released to the public. And you're also going to get 
real-time trade alerts with entries, stops, and profit targets for all the trades that we ourselves take. And <clears throat> you'll get access to premium nightly videos, which we send out every Sunday to Thursday. And you'll be able to see how we trade our various systems in those videos. You're also going to get access to a members-only weekly chat. We had our most recent one this morning. They happen every Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. You get to come into our room, ask me any trading-related question you like. They're really some great sessions. In addition to all that, you're going to get access to our library of past educational sessions, and you can reattend any of the pro webinars you pay for uh, as many times as you like. So you're going to get all of that free for the next 30 days. Together, this is a value of $988. But because we want you to see what we can do here at Trading Wins, all we're asking for today is $97. Again, the link is tradingwins.com forward slash move, M-O-V-E. We'll put that in the chat for you. And now we do have to limit this to 25 people because the goal for the class is to answer all your questions so that when you leave the class, you're able to trade this completely on your own. Okay? Again, this is everything you're going to get should be a great class. <clears throat> I hope you can join us. Vince, you know I, I have a problem with uh, the link, right? It's move, but I say, when it's L-O-V-E, you say love. Why don't we say muv <laughs> or louv? <laughs> anyway, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, it's a fantastic class. Yes. Tradingwinds.com slash move for $97. This same class sells in our store without the 30-day membership for two ninety seven. Correct. So you're getting this, you're getting the recording. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are asking about exits. I know it's a difficult and uh, involved topic, Yes. which is why you can't get into it here. Uh, David was asking, what were the settings on the, for the RSI and the cloud? Um, <clears throat> so let me just bring up my charts again and show you exactly what that is. Let me move this back to the daily. So for the cloud settings, you're going to actually use the default settings of 9 and 26. Okay, we're not changing those. All we're doing is taking off or unchecking. On, on Thinkorswim, you uncheck the show plot area for the Tenkin, the Kijun, and the Chiku. Okay, you just leave the Span A and Span B checked, which are the cloud portions. Okay, that's how you set up the cloud. And for the RSI, you're changing the length which is a default of 14, you're changing that to 7, okay? And then instead of having the lines drawn at the 70 and the 30 level, <clears throat> you, uh, you plot one right down the middle at 50. So it's an RSI 7 with a midline of 50. Any other questions? What everybody wants to know are symbols. So sure. as quickly as That's I can. Soon if we have time, yeah. James is asking about price line. Sure, PCLN. <clears throat> um, actually, Priceline has gone through this cloud now uh, <clears throat> with momentum. So this could end up being a sustained move to the downside. What we're waiting for now is uh, a move back above the RSI and back below for a proper setup. But if we look back in this area, there was a beautiful one right in here, <clears throat> right in here. And once we, we trade below the low of that bar, off and when, and, and, and these are sizable moves. I mean, this is an expensive stock. Um, you know, the entry would have been around the 11.55 area. It went as low as 10.16. So now no one's saying you're going to catch the absolute low. None of us have a crystal ball, but with the exit strategies, I'm going to show you, you're going to be able to catch the majority of that move. Okay. You always tell me, what's the hardest part for a system designer? Uh, the, the scariest part. The scariest part, The scariest sorry. part is just opening it up and, and having someone throw out a symbol because, you know, there's always stocks that work great with a strategy and some that don't, but um, we've traded this for so long, we're, we're uh, so confident with it, willing to open it up. See, that's why this is my favorite part, because I can actually put it in here with the symbols that people are asking. For example, Les is asking now about NUGT. And so these, you can see that these are not ones that we've made sure. up, we were just picking uh, random right. tickers. Right, so here, NUGT. During this period where you had more, <coughs> excuse me, momentum and trend in your favor, all you're waiting for is for the RSI to move back to that 50, okay, and then below, <clears throat> remember, it doesn't have to cross, but it does have to hit it. 
So in other words, that's why I leave the, the bubble here on the side where it tells you exactly where it's at, the number. As long as it comes back, touch that 50 and reverses, that's your setup and that would be your move. But remember, at the time that that happens, you have to make sure that the 20 period simple moving average has maintained its slope. If it flattens out like here, you do not want to take those trades. Okay. Uh, next one up is Hugh. He's asking about Boeing. Boeing. Yeah. Do you remember those symbols? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> there was a time where I had them all memorized. Now your uh, your age predates the internet, doesn't it? So, okay, uh, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Real funny. Uh, yes. Um, here on Boeing, you can see we went through the cloud <clears throat> with momentum. We're um, we're pulling back here. <clears throat> And hopefully it gives us a, a uh, an entry soon before the 20 period moving average flattens out. So we're waiting for that cross below. Uh, there was one trade here. You can see when it, it pulled back after coming through this cloud with momentum, gave you an entry short. One, one good thing uh, that you need to remember here, one thing that I don't think I've mentioned, is if you get a trade that is very close to earnings, Hey, you don't want to take that. That's too much risk. Earnings can cause a gap either way. Okay, so always make sure that you've got plenty of time for the trade to work out before the, uh, the earnings release. I want to say thanks to Robert, Chris, uh, Christine, Cliff, Steve, Josh, Jim, Richard, Milton, all for signing up for the class. Really looking forward yeah. to it. Thank you so much Thank for uh, putting your confidence and trust in us. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Right. And I want to answer one question. I see a question from Chris who says, what is the meaning of the, the different colors on the cloud? In the class, when I explain how to use that indicator uh, as a strategy in itself, that cloud color will matter. Okay. But for the purposes of this strategy, um, it really doesn't matter. All that matters is whether or not the candles and the moving average are either on one side of the cloud or the other uh, or are they overlapping? We've got three minutes left. Jose wants to know about AMAT. Uh, applied material, sure. We looked at that this morning in the market chat, didn't we? We did, we did. Um, and let's see here. We had <clears throat> a couple of entries in here. You can see these crosses. Let me just highlight them. Right in here. Okay. Now we're in this area. And then it would have gapped in your favor. I always say when it gaps in your favor, just take those profits and run. Um, and there was another nice trade here. You see how far this pulled back? Huge retracement. But look at that 20 period moving average. It maintained its slope. So as soon as you got that cross back above the RSI, that was your setup to go along. And you know, it moved on to fresh new highs. Uh, Christine says, Vince, always enjoy your courses. Feel Thank like you. I always learn something from them. Uh, thanks so much for your teaching. Thank you. Uh, Darren's asking, Vince, I just signed up, looking forward to it. What happens at the end of 30 days with my membership? Oh, um, if you're enjoying it, uh, you don't need to do anything. It will automatically renew at $97 a month. But if for whatever reason you'd rather not uh, continue, then just give us a call and we'll put a stop to it. Uh, we call it the world's easiest cancellation policy. Okay, we've got NTES next for Jane. Sure. I don't remember the name of that one. Is that one? Oh, NetEase. Okay. Uh, nicely trending stock. Uh, and again, if you look at when you did have momentum in your favor, you got that pullback, that cross, boom, off it went. You got another one, off it went. And over here, this one here, uh, resulted in a very nice uh, move higher, right off this cross, right in here. Okay. So. <clears throat> It's very, very consistent. That, that's the best part of this strategy. Uh, Carlos is asking, amongst a few other people, mm -hmm. sorry, along with a few other people are asking, they trade options. How will this strategy help them trade options and what specifically will you teach them during the pro class? Well, it helps you pinpoint those, those <laughs> entries um, which help with options, but you can really leverage uh, this with, with options, especially when you get those double dips. Um, you can really, really <laughs> leverage this. But in the class, again, I'm going to tell you, you know, when you want to buy a call versus uh, a call or a put versus selling a credit spread, exactly what kind of expiration you should be looking for, depending on the time frame you're trading, what kind of delta. We're going to cover all of that in the class. 